Welcome back to the tutorial. In this video, we'll get a bit more creative with our photography. Backgrounds play an important part in the look and feel of an image. Let's look at some ways we can use the backgrounds in our kit, together with items from the tying desk and the home to be more creative with our images. We've already covered how to take an image, and we appreciate there are only so many times you can watch a timer counting down. So from now on, we'll just show any images after they are taken. Let's start by taking three images. We'll move the background a little further away from the phone each time we take an image. This will give a different look each time. The further we move the background from the fly, the blurrier it becomes. Once you have found a distance that works for you, you can then repeat the distance each time you take a photograph to get a consistent result. And we can even go a stage further by turning the background and changing the angle. This makes one side blurrier and darker than the other to give us yet another look to our photographs. When choosing a background, we'd like one that will complement the fly and make it stand out. You will see, however, that not all backgrounds are suited to the colors of this fly. Some enhance and really make the fly pop, while others detract and can even make the fly disappear into the background. Others can even make it look garish. That's not to say that some backgrounds aren't very good, it's just that some don't suit this particular fly. Of course, this is all down to personal taste, but as a general rule of thumb, backgrounds of similar color to the fly, but which are of a different shade or brightness, but within the same color palette tend to work well, while sometimes a complete contrast is best. Let's look at a couple of other flies and backgrounds. Backgrounds with texture add interest to the image. And using backgrounds with a scene, such as this, will add a bit more interest to the image. So, when we've decided on a background to suit our fly, and we've taken an image, it looks good, and it's great to share. But there will be occasions, where you feel, you would like to take your photographs, just a stage further, as you feel they just need something else. Then, let's see if we can add a bit more interest to the shot. To create a photograph that will really stand out from the crowd, we can add more interest to the image by adding other items to the scene, which will give the image more depth and bring the image alive. Let's see if we can build a few scenes. We will need to rearrange the ring light and phone holder for these shots and we'll use the wooden background as the base for the image. To simulate a wooden table, and simply by adding a feather, we are already creating more interest. When selecting feathers, choose one that complements the color of the fly, or one that has been used in the fly itself. Move the background, or the phone, or both, until you are happy with the composition. Use the grid line intersections, to place an area of interest, Try to get an image that looks balanced, and one you like the look of. Whilst watching the tutorial, see if you can spot how the rule of thirds has been used in the images, where the grid lines would be, and if any areas of interest are on the intersections. Now we'll swap the fly, and introduce a bobbin holder, and take a look how that looks. Remember we are only introducing interest. We don't want it to overpower the image, and we want the fly to be the main subject. That's a very nice image. You can see how the scene looks, compared to how it looks on the camera screen. We've swapped the background, and we've added a fly on a bobbin holder with a contrasting colored thread. We have also placed a pair of scissors off-center as added interest, placing items diagonally and creating triangles within the scene gives a better look to the image rather than have items placed square to the edges. You can also see how as the scissors are outside of the depth of field, they have become blurry and out of focus 
and are starting to fade into the background, which emphasizes the fly even more. And here is the same setup, with the scissors replaced by a small partridge skin. Again, you can see the scene before the phone is put in place, to show how the image is built up. You can use the curvature of the skin, to frame the fly within the scene. And, here also, the partridge skin is blurry, which makes the fly stand out more. We're building images from scratch, so that you can see the process, right from the start. And to show you, that by using everyday items from around the home, we can create more interest in our images. First we'll choose a background. Next, we'll add the top from an old toadstool ornament, that we had lying around. We'll position this, so that it covers around two-thirds of the scene. Next, we add the bobbin holder, complete with our fly. Take your time, and play around with the position, until you find a composition you're happy with. Use the grid lines to help you. And this was the image. Let's build another. For this image we'll use the bamboo background. Notice how the lines of the bamboo are placed diagonally in the image on the phone screen. This creates more interest than straight lines. Next, we'll add our trusty toadstool top. And again, we want it to cover the front third of the image. Next we add the bobbin holder, and fly. And position as before. And here is the image. Let's compare it with the previous image. Two very similar images, both with a very different feel. And the only difference is the change of background. We'll build one final scene, this time. We'll introduce more depth into the image, by adding this cork log from an aquarium. Again, we'll use diagonals to create depth and interest. And this time we'll use the wooden background again. We can see on the phone screen, that by placing the cork log, at an angle, it creates triangles in the scene. The wood effect background also complements the log very well, to make a very nice, interesting image. You can also use house plants, to add a bit of contrasting color. Our website header image, which also plays, at the beginning of each video was shot, using an aloe vera plant, which came from my porch. Here you can see, we are using the stalk on a large pine cone, to suspend the fly. By keeping the background far back from the fly, you can see how as we discussed earlier, the background is blurry, which makes the fly stand out. And, by turning the cone around, we get another look. These are all very nice images. And remember these images are unedited, and straight out of the phone. Now you've seen the process, of how an image is built up. I'm sure you'll now have lots of ideas of your own. One background, we haven't looked at yet. Is the black background. And a plain black background is sometimes the best way to show off your fly. But quite often, the black turns out grey, and washed out looking. However, there is a simple way to achieve a perfect black background. Frame your fly, and then move the background, to the furthest point possible, while still filling the frame on the phone screen. You may have to turn the background sideways to achieve this, depending upon which framing aspect you are using. The smaller the better in this case. And, with this setup, you may need another stand, as is the case here. 
The ring light should be around 30 centimeters or 12 inches from the background. Choose one of the lowest power settings. This will stop any light falling on the background while still maintaining good lighting on the fly. And simply take the image. And that brings this tutorial to a close. We hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has given you some food for thought for your images. We wish you every success in your fly photography.